Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game repair video for you. If I'm repairing arcade games, why am I looking at a computer? It's because the later arcade games had computers in them. So this is off of a Silver Strike Bowling arcade game. Uh, we had a gentleman call us a few weeks back and say that he had a uh, Silver Strike arcade game at his church that didn't work. And he said that when he turned it on, the thing would come up and it would say, uh, please insert disc or something like that on the screen. So that's obviously something's wrong with the CPU. So uh, uh, we're going to uh, see if we can fix this sucker. Now, I'm going to tell you right here at the beginning of the video, I am not a computer guy. I don't know much about them, but I have worked on a few of these, so hopefully we can figure it out. I think there's something going on with the hard drive, or the software needs to be reinstalled, or something. Now, we won't be able to get it to come completely up, because it has a check that it does for like an in-out board, and um, uh, also a security dongle. Actually, you know what though? The security dongle's on the back. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll be able to fool it. We'll see what we can do. But, we... Um, we're going to try to fix it for the guy. He seemed like a cool dude, and he's trying to get the thing running for his church, and he's new there, and so whenever he took over, this thing was sitting over in the corner not working. So, again, I'm not a computer guy, so take it easy on me, people. Every time I do one of these with the computers, everybody tells me that I'm not saying the right words, or I'm not doing it right, or I'm taking too long, or they could have done it better. I'm sure all that's true, but nobody's here but me right now, so I'm going to have to try to fix it myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a power cord so I can plug it in. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, a computer monitor so we can plug that in and see if we get anything on the screen. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a keyboard and uh, plug that in. Now, I already took the side panel off. So you folks that think I don't know about computers, look, I knew how to take this off. I took the wrong one off first, but I'm getting better at that. So here's what we're looking at. Now you might say, oh, that's so old. Why are you putting such an old computer back in it? It's because we're trying to do it for, for free. We're trying to do it without spending any money. <laughs> right? And I've, I've been into this before, but whenever these companies made the hardware, or bought the hardware, for these uh, a few of these games, like Silver Strike, they made it so you can't use just any hardware in it. So you can't put a modern PC in it. You have to use the old one that they designed the software to run on. On most of them, the security dongle plugs into uh, the USB ports. And the, um, the in-out board also plugs into the USB ports. So he must have the correct setup. So basically, we've got some kind of problem with the hard drive. But for whatever reason, the hard drive's unplugged, which means somebody's been in here screwing around. I wonder if I just plug that back in. If we end up with a working game, that'd be too easy. There's no way it's that. Look, there's no... Look, I'm wrong again, people. It's one of those hard drives that's got... Is it... Here's where I'm going to start. Um, well, I've probably already started, but here's where I'm going to make more mistakes. It's not an IDE hard drive. It's got both. So it's got the IDE power, power thing but it's also got power over on the other side. But we'll look into that here in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to get the stuff, plug it up, and then we'll see if I can get anything up on the screen. I told you I was an amateur at the computers, right? I'll see if I can get anything up on the screen, and then we'll see where we can go from there. Okay, so I have a monitor rigged up. We've got it plugged into the little adapter that they were using uh, with the VGA cable. And you might say, well, why are you doing that? It's because that's how it is in the game. He didn't bring the whole game. He just brought me the, the, the computer box. So I'm trying to fix it so that the guy can come pick it up in his car so he doesn't have to bring me the whole game cause a big bunch of crap, right? Whenever it comes up and says insert disk or whatever, there's obviously some kind of software problem. If we can get the software fixed, he should be able to take the computer back, put it back in the game, and it'll come up. The hardest problem on these is whenever the monitor screwed up because it's big, it's heavy, it needs to be rebuilt. But if he's seeing stuff on the screen, he should be fine, right? I haven't seen pictures of it or anything yet. Okay, so I've got power on that. I've got power on this. I've got a keyboard plugged in. I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go. See if anything comes up. 
Fans are spinning, lights are blinking. Focus is drifting. <laughs> oh, we got something. 256 megabytes of RAM. Uh, system RAM, 512 system RAM. Oh, wouldn't it be something if it's just the battery? Boy, this guy might get out early. Easy. Press F4 to run setup. All right, I'm going to swap the battery, and then we'll try this again. If it's as easy as that, boy, that would be great. Oh, that'd be so cool. That's a very dead battery. People always tell me I get all the easy fixes. I don't know that that's what it is. I don't know. I get a bunch of hard fixes, too. And we haven't fixed it yet. I mean, I don't know why y'all are all so certain that this is going to fix it. You know, this is an updated computer, though. So somebody, at some point, has done a little work to this. It's got an updated video card. It looks pretty clean. So uh, wherever he got it from, I think maybe they had uh, already got it up and running and updated and doing its thing. But I'm going to go into the BIOS here to set the clock um, if we get it to boot again. Hmm. I put a new battery in it. Hmm. Uh-huh. See, y'all spoke too soon. You were bragging about, uh, you were bragging about how, uh, <laughs> How easy the fix was. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. Let me try it again. I don't see any caps that look problematic. You know, sometimes you get some caps that are all swollen up. Heard the disc's been up. Things are touchy. Mm. All I did was turn it off, take the battery out, put a new battery in it. I guess I should have. Uh... Well, hmm, it is not happy with this. I'm not getting booting lights either. Hmm, it's back to booting without the battery in it. It doesn't like when I put the battery in it. So what I'm thinking is happening is, well, you'd think I would still see this, this splash or this, you know, this, even if it passes this. So I know it's stopping here because of the, the battery, but you would think that would still be displayed if it's not going to time out with this error. Hmm... Okay, I'm going to try it again. I'll take, turn it off. Pop in the battery. The battery's good. It'll come to me eventually, people. You're probably all screaming at the screen what the problem is. Battery's installed properly. The default must be... It's slowing down. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It must have not liked something about the battery that I had, the way I had it installed. We'll keep messing with it. All right, let's go into setup. You're supposed to turn on a few things, I believe. Let me go up to... So some of this the configuration may need to be changed. I'm going to look online and see. Power. After power failure, power on. So that's one of the ways that they want um, an arcade game. So on an arcade game, like Silver Strike, whenever you turn the game off, all you do is it's a hard crash every time. You just turn off the power switch and it kills all the power to everything. So it's important that you change this to power on. It looks like in the BIOS of this particular motherboard, it's got where that does that automatically, though. But that's a problem that you run into a lot. A lot of times people will have a game that they need to reach in and turn on the computer. And it's because every freaking time these get turned off, it crashes. 
Okay, so yeah, I don't know which of these we're supposed to change, if any. Um, so let me see if I can research that a little bit and then I'll come back. And again, folks, this is specifically for a Silver Strike bowling arcade game, so it's not maybe not the smartest way to do it or the way that it's supposed to be done or the way that you would do it or whatever, but it, this particular arcade game, it needs to be done a certain way to work in the game. So uh, let me go. Let me go see if there's anything I'm supposed to set up. Usually online they have uh, some information about that on Incredible Technologies website. All right, folks. I couldn't find anything about it. Basically, this isn't the right computer. It's supposed to have a Nighthawk system in it, which is completely different than this. So somebody has made this probably recently because it looks pretty good. Let's look inside it and see if we can figure out what. I guess you could tell by the screen that we were just looking at what the setup is, but I'll show you a little better in the case so we can see. Okay, so the card says XFX, and it says, I'm going to read it for you, it's upside down, um, GF6600 256 megabyte DDR dual DVI TV PCI. Um, so that's our video card, or at least what that sticker says our video card is. Uh, and then the actual motherboard, Intel desktop board, D615GAG. I can't read it good enough, people. Security, power, boot. Silent boot disabled. Let's see if I understand any of this stuff. <laughs> Maybe I can see if any of it looks right. You know, in a perfect world, the BIOS, whenever it resets, it would have all of the correct values in it. Silent boot disabled. Intel rapid BIOS boot disabled. Scan user flash area enabled. Okay. PXE boot to local area network disabled. USB boot disabled. Boot device priority First boot device disabled. Specifies the boot sequence from the available devices. A device enclosed in parentheses has been disabled in the corresponding type menu. I don't, that don't look right. That should be the first boot device, right? Am I wrong? Am I making a mistake there, people? Hard disk drives. First drive specifies the boot sequence from the available devices. Select the boot device with up arrow or down arrow key. Okay, yeah, that might have been it might have been fine the way it was. Let's change it back and see if it seems all right. So the first boot device is disabled. Hard disk drive specifies the boot sequence from the available devices. Okay, I guess that's probably how it was supposed to be. Let's go back to main. All right, you already saw that. It doesn't sell, it doesn't show us our uh, motherboard information. Where do I find our motherboard information, people? I'm not going to mess with the PCI configuration, boot configuration. Plug and play operating system is on no. Number lock is on. All right, so that's no big deal. Peripheral configuration. Serial port A, auto, parallel port auto, mode, mode bi-directional. Onboard audio is enabled. Legacy FP audio is enabled. Onboard local area networks enabled. ASF support is enabled. Drive configuration. Port zero is a Hitachi. Spinner. <laughs> disabled. All IDE resources disabled. I understand a little bit of this. Floppy configuration. Disk is disabled. That's a horrible thing, people. Event log configuration. I'm sure all of that's been... Keyboard not functional, keyboard not functional. 
keyboard not functional. So every time it boots, there's no keyboard plugged in. But you, you'd think that that uh, would have been reset when I replaced the uh, battery. Video configuration. Primary video adapter, PCIe graphics. USB configuration. High-speed USB enabled, legacy USB support enabled. PCI Express configuration. I don't know anything about that. Chipset configuration enabled. Fan control configuration. CPU fan control disabled, fan control disabled. Hardware monitoring. Um, only thing that we're really looking at is we want we do want it to be saying that the fans that it can read the fans because on Silver Strike it can t it the software actually checks for that and if one of the fans isn't running it will pop up on the screen like a big error with a thermometer that says cooling problem blah 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 but it doesn't check uh, the front fan because it, they didn't install it in the cabinet again this is the wrong case but it looks like somebody did a pretty good job of making it just like the Nighthawk system. I am impressed. Okay, we're going to save and exit. And if the thing boots properly, it will come up to a screen and say that the security device is missing and that the in-out board's missing. So hopefully we get that. So F10. That would be so cool. Come on, you sucker. Are we going to get lucky? Nope. Reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device. Okay, so maybe we need to do our... Maybe we need to do our boot order. Uh, we need to go back to our... Boot menu. Boot device priority. Yeah, the first boot device is disabled. I don't know if it should be like that. I'm going to put it on that. Okay. It could be that that's how it is set up whenever the BIOS has been reset. And the guy, when it came up and said press F4 or whatever, that he plugged a keyboard in and did that. Maybe. Maybe. Uncompressing Linux. Linux. Oh man, my focus is screwing up on you. Yeah, that was it. So basically, whenever the BIOS resets on this particular one, it turns off the boot priority. So it basically was coming up and it didn't know to try to boot from the, uh, from the hard drive. What a time for the focus to be tripping. Boy, this is going to be one of my worst quality videos ever. I can hear the hatred already for this one. All right, looks like we're getting it to boot, though. So it's going to come up, like I said, and uh, not be able to find the... Um, not be able to find the um, um, security device and reset, but we're going to turn it off and back on a couple times. Error 12, a disconnected USB in-out board is being detected. Please turn off game. Be certain all connections are in place. Wait 10 seconds, then turn game back on. So I believe we are going to get away with the only problem was the BIOS needed to be set up, and the only thing that needed to be set up was the boot order. It's The, the BIOS, when it resets, turns off all of the... Uh, it doesn't even have a default device or way to, to boot. Or maybe that's some kind of uh, Linux thing or something. I don't know. I'm sure all of you know it, though, so you can tell me down below. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it off, wait 10 seconds, then turn the game back on and see if it happens like they say. One. Two. Three. We're going to wait even longer because this one seems to have problems if you don't wait long enough. Four. <laughs> five. 
six, seven, eight, eight and a half, nine, ten. When you hear the speed of the fan slow down a little bit, it means it's going to boot. Whenever it, that didn't happen, it never booted. Yep. Going to Linux. Linux. Just to give you an idea of what it's saying. It's basically all of this is okaying out. And this is just the, the Silverstrike software starting. This is very, uh, I'm familiar with this because it does it on all of the uh, Nighthawks. Starting database maintenance. Wham! I think we're good. So if this was in the game, it would find the in-out board and it would find the security dongle and it would boot up. So that's where we are. All right, so I'm going to put the, I'm gonna put the uh, side back on it. Good God, with this freaking focus. Everybody tells me that I sound like A-V-E. I don't know that guy. <laughs> I need to watch his channel. And I don't know how he pronounces that. But they say that he always, whenever his focus doesn't act, he like curses out the phone and beats on it. I mean the, the camera and beats on it. But I'm not going to do that, people. But everybody always tells me I should do that. All right, so uh, I'm going to put the side back on it. I think we've got it fixed it was an easy fix it was just the battery now people i have people tell me all the time oh you should show more of what you're doing i want to see you actually do it well i just showed you what i actually do and uh it's not all that interesting so normally i would cut all this out and say yeah i swapped the battery and the boot uh, sequence was wrong so i swapped that and that's that blah, blah, blah. but it's kind of boring you know um, and i don't know what i'm doing a lot of the time i just kind of fumble around and eventually i figure it out the most important thing to, to be to at least doing arcade repair is tenacity. You just have to keep at it, and eventually you'll figure it out. So that's kind of what's going on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you uh, footage of us playing a Silver Strike, so you can see what the game's like. Um, and uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Go ahead and tell me all the things I did wrong. I don't mind because I know I don't know what I'm doing on this. Uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. Or you can give us a thumbs down if you really didn't like it. But if you didn't like it, I've got to wonder why you watched after at the beginning I told you what it was going to be like, right? <laughs> We'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below there's a link to Amazon. Uh, if you go to Amazon to purchase anything if, through that link, it gives us a, a tip. So we appreciate that. A lot of people have been doing that. Somebody in Australia uh, has been doing that a lot. The Australia number is going way up. Thank you uh, to all of our Aussie friends. Uh, and also, make sure to check out our brother's channel, My Brother Donnie. If you don't know about My Brother Donnie, he is literally my brother, and he's got a channel on here. If you like watching us fumble around in the darkness with this uh, old electronic stuff and arcade game stuff, uh, you'll really like his channel. Uh, we work on old buildings we're trying to fix up, so go check that out. So, we appreciate it, folks. Wish I could have been uh, uh, more precise on what's going on here, but I think we figured it out, didn't we? I think we're good. So normally, whenever it did this, it would go past this, and it would boot up into gameplay, right? So maybe I can show you what it does on a normal one. I think I've filmed that before. And then we can play it a little bit. So this is uh, the original Silver Strike uh, bowling game, which is a very fun game. Let's play it a little bit. I'm going to call the customer and tell them we got lucky, and it wasn't that bad. Incredible technologies, people. Lilo. See if I can get it to focus a little better for you. We'll turn off our autofocus. Boys, well, booting up quick.
I hear audio. Software, hardware, and CID key code all matches up. So it's on free play. Let's see if we can. Uh... Welcome to Silver Strike Oh, let me go on a test. Melting today's game is Randy Peterson, holder of 13 career titles. Over to you, Randy. Thanks, Matt. It's great. Track volume, in game volume. Yeah! <laughs> Default stereo or mono? Hmm, we've got stereo. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to play the Vegas mode. I'm going to show you the difference. So this is the original Silver Strike Bowling, and it's real easy to think, oh, well, I want the Silver Strike 2009. That's the newer one, right? But I'm going to show you why you don't want the Silver Strike 2009, why you want the original one if you can help it. Um, Game mode free play, skill level normal, insert dollars, quarter per slot, we did sound adjustments, back, uh, ba -ba -ba. there's all kinds of system tests you can do, but we're not going to worry about that, silver strike settings, player call schedule, game audits, that might be interesting. Oh, you know, it won't be right, though, because it's a copy of the hard drive and all that. Lifetime money total, $8,359. I don't know. I don't know if that would be for this game or this hard drive that I've got a copy of that I'm burning or, or what, you know. Um, okay, uh, game options. Vegas Bowling. On. This is why you want the original Silver Strike Bowling. Delay timeout, ball timeout for four balls. Game event info. Strike percentage, 14%. Spare percentage, 27%. Split percentage, 12%. That's pretty crazy. I didn't know they kept track of that. Average game score is 106. So if I can beat 106, I'm above average. Oh, did it say no 300 games? Is that what it said? 300 games, zero. Okay. Reset leader boy boards, ticket dispenser. IT net settings, we're not on IT net, so. Yeah, that's all not going to work. Okay, so we're going to play it, and we're going to do Vegas Bowling. I don't know if I've done that on any of them, or I'm sure you, know, you can see it on other people's videos, but on the original Silver Strike Bowling, it had a mode called Vegas Bowling. On the later versions, I don't know if it was on the, the next one or the third one, uh, they took it off and made it where it was only available online. And the reason they did that was because it was considered gambling in certain states. So they actually had it as an online feature so that if you were in a state that it was illegal, when the game called in to be connected to the Internet, it would turn off that feature. But on this original version, it's on the regular offline game. So, one player, but select two or more players for special Vegas mode, right? So we're going to do a single game. Vegas bowling. Players are dealt a card for every strike or spare. See who can get the highest hand. Okay, so I'm going to move you a little bit so I can uh, use the track ball a little bit. Deal with it, people. So I'm a dude. Hey, let's get started. Okay, so I like to make it where it curves just a little bit. Um, not enough. You got a 50-50 on that one. 50-50 right. on that one. Let's go straight with it since it's a, I don't have to pick up everything. Okay, so there's my spare. And I got a six. Your initials. 
Yeah, let's see it. All right, so I'm the only one here, so I'm going to play Vegas Bowling against my brother Donnie, who's not here. Now, if you haven't figured out my brother Donnie, he has a, a, a channel that we're promoting on our channel. It's literally my brother. I'm Ronnie. He's Donnie. And uh, <laughs> he does a lot of, like, small engine repair, farm stuff. He's got a... Uh, Beginning frame one. He talked me into buying a, uh, a uh, mobile home that we've been working on. Um, oh, too much. He'll take seven. So he has a channel linked down below. We'll act like the second player is my brother, Donnie. What do you think about that? Let's see who wins. Just enough speed for some pin action. Now, I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to try playing as good as him. Yeah, good. Congratulations. He cheated. <laughs> awesome. Here's that pickup one more time. So my whole point is, if you get the original Silver Strike, you can play Vegas Bowling. If you get the later ones, you can't put them online anymore, so you can't play Vegas Bowling. Let's see the scores, shall we? Cards left 50. We're at the top of frame two. Okay. This curve will give him some extra pit action. Ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm missing it. I shouldn't be moving over, probably. Uh oh, uh oh. Mm. You move on with three pin standing. Are you up? All right, let's see if Donnie's any better at the at the the curve. Oh, he gave a smooth delivery on that one. Didn't quite get it. Leaves a fast eight. That ball won't stay the course. Mmm. There's the cherry picker. There's the cherry picker. It's your turn. Nice smooth delivery down the lane. Mm, yeah, that's how you do it. Sweet sound. And I got the ace like Donnie has. One more time. Let's look at that spray. That is great. Going into frame three. He's almost as good as I am. Here's how the game is progressing. I'm beating him <laughs> in the cards. Ball one, frame four. Okay. Not a lot of res on that ball. No, not enough though. He gains 70%. Safe, not too fast, missed it. Too slow. Staying positive is the key to turning things around. Play That's true. To go. Revving it up. <laughs> oh, he gets a double. I'm beating myself. Let's see that incredible strike again. Wow, look at that. Let's recap the game. Let's recap the game. Bowler one takes the approach. Oh, he gave a smooth delivery on that one. Mm. That's seven. He could sure use a spare on this one. Oh. I'm left-handed, so I'm, I'm hitting it with my left hand, and it's... I'm, I'm making it pull a little bit to the right because of the way I'm hitting it. Really, it's your fault because the camera's in the way. He's playing it real safe, not too fast. But when I'm slow. when I'm the second player, I keep doing better. Oh come on! Tremendous. One more time. Let's look at that strike. 
Look at this crap. He got a turkey, but it was really me that got a turkey. You know what I mean? Let's see the start of a comeback. Oh yeah. Woo! He has the crowd's attention now. Wow, here's that great strike again. Now that is a beautiful ball. He's got a four-bagger coming up. All right. Now, if y'all don't bowl much, I am not a great bowler, but I've worked in a lot of bowling alleys <laughs> on their arcade games, so I can tell you one of the one of the beginner secrets of bowling. This is for beginners, not experts. If you're good, you you already know this. Is the reason that you throw the ball curled like that is because if you hit it straight on. At least one more in them. You're going to get a split. Now, I'm not an expert, obviously, right? And then on a bowling lane, I can't even do as good as I can on the video game. But if you hit it straight on, you hardly ever get a strike. You have to hit it to the side a little bit. You have to hit just a little off center to get it. And so if you, if you can get it to curl... See how I went right through the middle? If you can get it to curl, the, the pins bounce different and the ball goes through some of the other pins. That's how you get a strike. Player on the runway. So you really want to hit it between the middle and the pin just to the left of it if you're going... The best way to hit it is slightly to the... Like the way I'm bowling is slightly to the left of the, of the first pin. If you hit it slightly to the right, you can still get a strike, but you're better off if you cross the pin a little bit because it just drives them better. Oh, he gave a smooth delivery on that one. See, I hit it to the right of the pin, and it, it made it miss that one. If I would have been to the left of the pin, it would have pushed more of them that way and hit it. But whenever you've only got one, you want to try to just throw it straight. Nice, smooth delivery down the lane. Get out of town. Ball one. All right, so I want it to cross over the first pin. Too much. I was just a little bit to the left. And is left with three. He's a straight shooter. All right. He's getting some encouragement from the crowd. Let's take a look at everyone's score. Roller at the line. There we go. Oh, not quite enough. Needs a six pin. Will it show me? Will it show it again? No. Let's do 14 still. The medium ball weight mixes pin action and precision. He's getting some encouragement from the crowd. Looking for the clean game. Perfect. See, see, you could you could tell by the way it was going to hit that it's going to be a strike, and it's like that in real bowling too. So I was just to the left, and it's going this way. So the ball is going to hit all these, and it's going to push all those pins that way as you go. And hit the other one. We're at the ninth frame. He's playing it real safe, not too fast. Not enough of a curve. So see, I hit it on the right side that time, but it screws y'all up. And now I've got a split. There ain't no way. Now if you if you can get it to curve and hit that, it's possible. Get your handful, son. <laughs> Yeah, throw, so I threw it too fast so it didn't curve as much.
in real life, you wouldn't do that as much because in real life, you're going to throw it about the same speed each time. You know, but on a game, you're hitting the ball, it just does different stuff. Oh, he gave a smooth delivery on that one. Eight down, two up. Splits can be very tough to pick up. Yep. So I, I'm not, a, you know, again, I'm not an expert. I think the only way to do this is to hit the four so hard that it bounces off the left wall and then hits the 10 when it spins back around, which I don't even think I can do. I'm going to try to, like, throw it diagonally. I don't even know if I can do that either. <laughs> nope. If you would have just, if I would have just barely hit it on the side, it may have knocked it so hard to the left that it hit the wall and hit the other one. It's real tough, though. Final frame. Strike now to offset that last open frame. Big curve, lots of action. Nope, not enough. Mm. He ends up with a wrap. Uh oh, gutter ball. And you almost pulled 130. So I got a pair. That's all I got. But Donnie got a lot more cards, so he'll be able to beat that. Too much, too much speed. If it would have been a little bit slower, it would have curved back before it got to the pin. Straighter is greater. That'll give him the mark. Way to maximize your game. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit there. Perfect. Now a little bit to the left. If I would have been a little faster, it would have been all right. So he got two pair. So there you go. All right, folks. Cool game. Player two walks away the winner. On behalf of Incredible Technologies and all its staff, I am Randy Peterson saying thanks for playing Silver Strike Bowling. He's Randy Peterson saying thanks for playing Silver Strike Bowling. And I agree.